Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Heather Havenwood, and welcome to, well, it used to be the win. Now it's a new show called Like a Boss. So, welcome, welcome, welcome. I really appreciate you being here. And today we're going to be talking about leadership in our subconscious mind. So, this is an extremely important conversation, and I highly suggest you stop whatever you're doing or stay on the treadmill, whichever one, and listen up. So, today we have Karen Brown is on the call with us. And Karen is an unconscious mind subject matter expert in the, in the field of leadership and professional performance. Her second book on the subject was recently published Unlimiting Your Beliefs, Seven Keys to Greater Success in Your Personal and Professional Life, where she reveals the scientifically proven keys to greater success. The book has received wide critically acclaimed with a five-star review from Brian Tracy and named number one hot, re number one Amazon hot new release. Her mission is to eradicate limiting beliefs and transform the world. All right. Wow. Thanks, Karen. I appreciate that. Thanks for being here. Yeah, I'm excited to be here with your listeners. And yeah. if you're on the treadmill, run faster. <laughs> so true. Uh, I listen to podcasts when I'm on the treadmill. So I feel like I have to like shout it out for myself or someone. Yeah. Else. Um, so let's talk about your story. You were always, I asked you earlier in the green room, as I call it, you know, how did you get started or how long you've been in the leadership development? How long has that been? 31 short years. Wow. 31 short years. Okay. How long have you been on your own in that space? Six years with my own company, Velocity. Cool. Okay, great. Congrats. And by, by the way, I love the name Velocity. That's really actually. Thank cool. you. Yeah. You're welcome. welcome. So uh, we were talking in the green room about, about something that, that I kind of asked you, what, what's unique? What is your unique thing from, how did you go from corporate to where you're at today? And I just kind of want to open that door of, I think so many people understand how they feel stifled on some level and they feel like something's off when they're in the corporate world. So I just kind of want you to talk about your story of, of kind of how, what that was for you. Yes. So for 28 years, I was climbing the corporate ladder and I had all of the outward signs of success. I had a nice house. I had a really nice life. I had a new car. I had nice clothes. I, I went on nice vacations, et cetera, et cetera. And the whole time, that whole 28 years, I also had this growing, nagging feeling like I wasn't utilizing my true capability and that I was squandering it. And that began to feel worse and worse as every year went by. And what I came to understand in 2010, finally, at the age of 44, mm -hmm. is that I had this dream, this lifelong dream of competing in the Ironman World Championships in Kona, Hawaii. Many of us have seen that on TV every year. Yeah. And I was a total amateur athlete and that I had been holding myself back from pursuing that dream with something called limiting beliefs. And this is why I wrote the book because Everything in the book is scientifically proven on how our unconscious mind works. This, this is all from neuroscience. And I wanted to share this because it is the, what I found to be the number one thing that holds all of us back from realizing our potential and achieving our goals and dreams. And I wanted it to be accessible to everyone. Mm -hmm. So it goes like this. This is the essence of a limiting belief. When we say or think something like, well, I don't have enough time, talent, skill, money, support to achieve that, that is a limiting belief. And here's the good news. In the book and today, I provide the antidote or the way to conquer and transform limiting beliefs into unlimiting beliefs. And here's the spoiler alert. <laughs> Once I did this, like once I learned what a limiting belief was and that it had been stopping me for 28 years, and then I learned and, and utilized the technique on how to transform it, I crossed the finish line in Hawaii two short years later. That's really awesome. So uh, let's go back though, because I love the story and the success story, but I want to hear the grit. Like what actually had you go wake up and say, I am unhappy? Because I think that we all wake up into worlds called we're unhappy, but mm -hmm. to make that kind of transition where you're literally taking neuroscience and applying it to your life and saying, I'm about to go to Hawaii and do this mm -hmm. Ironman, that, that takes some kind of massive alteration in your life. So like, what was that? Was it financial? Was it a divorce? I'm not saying that this, but what was that thing? 
Uh, okay, so you just tripped upon something that's really important because yeah. this, this does happen in neuroscience and it, it all happens in our unconscious mind. So first of all, let me set the stage for this because everything I'm going to share is scientifically proven. It's how our unconscious mind works, okay? Yeah. And this is the key to greater performance in our professional and personal lives, okay? So first yeah. of all, a statistic. Uh, our conscious thoughts and efforts or actions every day yeah. only comprise 0.008% of everything that we do and think in a day. Mm -hmm. The rest comes directly from our unconscious mind, okay? Now, and for the sake of argument, unconscious and subconscious mean the same thing, okay? I'm not gonna go all science woo-woo on you and you know draw graphs and charts and all that stuff. Just because I get that question a lot. Is my subconscious the same as my unconscious? Yes. I just use the term unconscious, okay? All right. So what this looked like is every year for 28 years, I would just happen, and there's no coincidences, mind you, I would just happen to catch the televised coverage of the Iron Man. And every time I did, I was reduced to tears because watching it brought out this tidal wave of really deep, powerful emotions within me. Wow. And if I boiled them down, it was always, wow, what if I have what it takes to do that? And if I do have what it takes to do that, then I'm living this small, safe life and I am squandering my ability. Mm -hmm. And see, most of us, actually take action to change something in the face of pain, right? Like that's human beings. We will take action to get away from pain or to avoid pain. Well, what I was doing is a little bit different and this, this is how some people are different. I was actually choosing to take action to get into pleasure, to move toward pleasure, which was crossing the finish line at Hawaii. And ultimately what it was really was a metaphor for the greater success that I was meant for. You know, to be a, a two-time published author, uh, an international speaker, and a, a subject matter expert in the field of leadership and professional performance. Like, that's what I was meant to do, and I was meant to fulfill these big missions. But, you know, back then, I thought, oh, you know, I'm just supposed to lead a corporate life and make all sorts of money and lead that materialistic, shallow sort of existence, and yeah, that, that's supposed to be me, right? No. That's why I had that icky, unhappy feeling inside. And what ultimately drove me um, you know, to make all the changes through a lot of grit and determination, because here's the real behind the scenes, behind the curtain grit yeah, yeah, of it all. Real grit, right? Yeah. I, I was married at the time, and my husband actually was probably one of my biggest naysayers. He actually said to me, you know what? Better athletes than you have tried years to get to Kona. You don't have what it takes to get there. And you know what? You don't just roll out of bed one day and decide to do the Ironman. <laughs> so ultimately, that marriage uh, crashed and burned. <laughs> yeah. What a surprise, right? A surprise, right? I mean, yeah. I want to stop you for a second. So first of all, thank you for sharing because that's, I think a lot of people could resonate with that where they have a spouse, parent, friend whatever that really does not support them and somewhere yeah. along the way that they squandered their own sparkle and i have a saying here don't let anyone dull your own sparkle yes i just um, um what that is heather is it's other people's limiting beliefs about you getting in your way yeah so I, so, so as, yeah. as far as that i mean so yeah you're on the scientific piece but I just, as far as like, the feeling of experience mm. of being able to share a desire and a dream of our lives with someone that we love and care about whatever that is a parent a child or whatever that with someone that we love and care about we do sometimes take on their own limiting beliefs but it really does squander our own sparkle and the yeah. fact that you were able to hear that you heard it and yeah. then not allow it to really sink into a level of owning it. I think yeah. that's really the critical piece of your story right now. Like he said that, he, you know, whatever his own stuff, really, you didn't yeah. take that on and you chose anyway to say, well, whatever. And I'm still choosing it. I mean, I think that's super powerful. Yes. And it wasn't without a lot of tears and anguish and teeth gnashing and a lot of other emotions. Yes, yeah. you are right. Yeah. I did not take that on. Yeah. It's a really cool piece. I mean, I think for myself, ex examples that I've been betrayed so many times about other people um, and that they're about 
betrayed me because they didn't believe in me at the level that I thought I wanted to be. And so it happens as we grow, as we expand, and this is just for anyone really, it's like any, as we expand, as we grow, just like in our bodies, when we grow as kids, we will release people. We will release things. We will release limiting beliefs. We will release. If you don't, you'll be stuck, you know? Yeah. And so you have to like start to let go. Yeah. The more you let go, the more your sparkle can shine. And so just going back to your story, that's pretty powerful. So I, if you don't mind just giving us a timeline a little, like when he said that, and then like the time when you crossed the finish line, do you have some, can you share? Yeah. Yeah. So he said that, uh, I, I started to pursue the Ironman in September of 2010 and he said that pretty much right away. Mm. Uh, and so the writing was kind of on the wall and I, I came back to him and said, I'm sorry that you feel that way, but you know what? I have to do this. I have to pursue this and see what I'm capable of as a human being. And if I don't do this, I will end up being an alcoholic or worse. Like I will be an unhappy shell of a person, one of these zombies that we all know, walking around, very unhappy, completely dejected. Yeah, I said, it's not going to end well unless I pursue this and see what I really can do. Yeah. So then he, he just sort of said, well, okay, if that's the case, then you're on your own. I, you know, I don't want to support this. I don't want to, you know, do anything with it, whatever. He did come to a couple of events and he was, he was helpful. Um, but you could tell his heart just wasn't in it. And he really just wanted a traditional wife. So he was just kind of going through the motions. Right. So then fast forward to 2012. That's when we started going through, actually went through the, the dregs of the contentiousness of the divorce, which started in 2011 and really came to a pinnacle that summer of 2012. And then I crossed the finish line on October 13th of 2012. Wow. So that, so this is great. I mean, th- first of all, thanks for sharing. No, I mean, this is great, but what I'm saying is <laughs> thank you for sharing. It didn't feel so great at the time. Yeah, trust me. <laughs> no, I, sorry, excuse me. I totally, but thank you no, for sharing because you were, it's like these crossroads, you know, it's like as you were pushing through massive training of your body, mind, spirit, to be able to do that kind of level of training. At the same time, this other piece of your life in a way was being ripped, you know, like being ripped and changing. And so I think it's this huge metaphor is -hmm. that one, the power of our brain and our mind and our spirit. But number two, you didn't wait to say, well, I need to get through this divorce then. You're like, no, 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 it's and, you know, it's yes. why it's like, it's push, it's actually propelling me through it. And as the, you know, the ending of one chapter, let's call it, you were moving into the new chapter then. You didn't wait, you know, yes. that's so powerful because so many people came to me and say, well, you had this bankruptcy, you lost everything. Uh, you know, what'd you do then? Did you sit on your, on your just couch and cry? I'm like, well, yeah, there were moments, you know, but like I had to, I had to keep going at that chapter was ending just like an earthquake. It has to move past it. It's in that power that you were able to cross that finish line. I think it's beautiful and a metaphor that you were able to cross that finish line in the same year that you ended a chapter of your life, which is the ending of a marriage, which is a ripping of, of your heart. And I think, I mean, I think that shows your power, but it probably shows a lot more about your limiting beliefs and what you're talking about today. Yes, absolutely. And one more point I want to make about this is I am just like everyone that is listening right now. Trust me when I tell you, I am nothing special. I am no natural talent. I mean, I was athletic when I started this endeavor, but that was it. I wasn't a swimmer. I wasn't even a road cyclist. I was basically a, a recreational runner. And I had just taken over leadership, a new leadership role of a failing office where I had to turn it around quickly for ownership. Honestly, I didn't even know what I was doing there. And then uh, I was in this brand new world called triathlon where I was frequently the slowest competitor. I was doing two to three workouts a day. I was having to say no to all these things in my schedule so that I could do these workouts. I was going to bed at eight o'clock at night, getting up at 3.30 in the morning getting into the pool at four, completely changing the way I ate and fueled my body. So I had to learn a whole new system. Yeah, you learned, you learned literally how to live newly. It, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I share this, you know, and I had this contentious divorce going on at the same time. So I share this because 
This is what we all have going on, right, in our lives. And the, the point that you made earlier was key, that a lot of times we will hold ourselves back and say, well, I just want to get through this and then I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. Or I just want this to, you know, to clear up and then I'll pursue that. Right. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Pay attention to what that feeling is because it's there for a reason. I mean, this was literally the gateway to who I was supposed to be and what I'm supposed to do in this earth, knocking on my door. Like, would you pay attention and open the door, Karen? Come on. Come on. You know, I always think I love, but my favorite part of the Olympics, by the way, is the stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And because sometimes when they do these stories, because we see them there as athletes all like dolled up and everything, but they don't know what it takes waking up at three in the morning, going to the, they do not know what all the things they had to say no to, you know, yeah. all the things they had to say no to in life to be able to sacrifice for this dream. That's so amazing and huge. We don't see all that sacrifice. They just yeah. see, we just see them on, you know, on TV and like, look at that, look at that. So, and I think as part, as a business owner, as a woman, this is such a critical conversation. If like, if you want something, if you want something, what what that is, Iron Man, Olympics, new business, it's gonna take a radical change in your life. I, I've had to, I, I've been on bodybuilding, I've crossed the stage. It takes something to be a bodybuilder at that level. Like one of the hardest things I had to do, it sounds so funny, I always laugh about this. The hardest part of it, the workouts are nothing. <laughs> They're nothing. Working out twice a day, that's the easy part. The hard parts in the kitchen and drinking two gallons of water a day. <laughs> That's like the hardest part, you know, and saying, no, I can't go out. No, I can't go to that party. No, I can't have a glass of wine for like two years. You know, yeah. that's the hard part. You have mm -hmm. to transfer getting up at five in the morning and doing cardio when, when you want to sleep, you know, I yeah. think it's, it's that level that's so critical. So, um, so take us through the limiting beliefs that you had to, I'm going to use the word change. You might use another word. Conquer. Conquer. Okay, great. What, yeah. Tell us, yeah, when did the, this process start for you learning neuroscience? Was it during this two-year time capsule or when was that? I got exposed to it in 2010. Okay. okay. And it, it came in a class that I took where we were doing a bunch of other things about building your business. And one of them was about limiting beliefs and how that is such a limiting factor. And I had never heard of them before. And as soon as the instructor went through it, I revisited my limiting belief about Hawaii, about the Ironman, which was, it went exactly like this. Well, the competitors that go to Kona are elite. They're up here. That are, they're at a high level. Yeah. I am just a recreational athlete and I am down here. I am at a low level. Who do I think I am that I will be able to compete against them? And poof, just like that, the dream evaporated again for a whole year. And I would just like shove it down mm -hmm. and forget about it. Yeah. So uh, once I understood, you know, huge light bulb went off, or went on. And I, I said, that's it. That's what's been holding me back for 28 years. And then I discovered the the antidote to it, how to conquer them, how to transform them. And then I just jumped in totally. I, I thought, all right, well, I'm going to test this out with this number one limiting belief that I've had, right? Then what I discovered is there were more limiting beliefs hanging out in this pinball mind that we all have That's true. and just bouncing around every day. So I had a whole page of limiting beliefs that were holding me back. So it's no wonder I hadn't pursued this in 28 years. So I actually then did this technique with all of them. And then, like I said, I fast forward, I was able to dig in and do what it took, you know, changing my fuel, changing my, my workout routine, you know, learning everything that I didn't even know about this world of, about triathlon. Cause I, I hadn't even done a triathlon ever before this and learning the, you know, learning the way that my mind really worked because here's a key guys, think about, think about this. Our unconscious mind is like the caveman brain, right? It was literally created to keep us alive when we were cavemen, right? So it instantaneously has to make a judgment about everything that comes at us, including our own thoughts, which is 
is this friend, food, or foe? Mm -hmm. And most of the time, it will err on the side of, oh, this is a threat. This is something bad. It's called negativity bias. Look that up. And it will hold us back because it will say, oh, you know, to me, it would say, you don't want to do the Iron Man. That, that's going to kill us. Like, yeah, that's going to that's gonna hurt. That's a lot. That's going to kill yeah. us. Friend, foe. That's, that's, that's foe. That's enemy. Yeah. 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 It's going to take me outside of my comfort zone, right? That's a popular thing to say. Or like, and, why do it? Like, what's the point? You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> why? Yeah. Well, I can see the, I mean, I, for myself, like, why do it? What would be the reason? Is there some health issue? What's the problem? You got an issue? You know, your brain starts to find that. Why even do this? What's the point? Yes. Yes, absolutely right. And it will always usually err on that side unless you know how your unconscious mind works and you actively rewire it to support you in what you want to achieve. Yeah. Yeah. So you're ready to know how to do it? Yeah, let's do it. Like, I love that. And I, I, I just, before we get started with this antidote, so listen up, whatever you're doing, keep running on the treadmill, go faster. <laughs> I love that. Um, if you're driving, don't go faster, just keep driving. Um, but let's, let's look at it. First, before we get started, I want people just to kind of take a second and just think of one limiting belief that they know is right there. They know what that is. It could be with finance. It could be with the relationships. It could be with money. It could be with your children. It could be with yourself. It could be with weight loss, whatever. Like just pick one right now before she starts giving the antidote. So we can actually, you actually, you can actually do a little workshop here and deal with something and really change that limiting belief. So just take a second, think of one, and then uh, let's uh, listen to Karen's antidote. Let's do it. Great prelude. Okay. So uh, in the show notes that we'll go over at the end. Uh, I also provide a form that you can use for this because one way into the unconscious mind is by writing. Mm -hmm. Another way is verbalization. And that's another key in the book. So you want to write this down. And if you're driving right now, do not try to write this down. Right, right. Wait until you get to your destination. Same thing if you're on the treadmill, probably not going to work if you're going to try to write this down and run. At least I couldn't. Yeah. Uh, okay. So just Take heart in the fact that there is a form on the show notes that will give you, that'll walk you right through this whole process and you can repeat it for anything you want. Okay. So we got you covered. Got your back. All right. So uh, if you have thought of a limiting belief, great. What I want you to do is either use a journal or use the form we're giving you, or just use a plain white piece of paper. It doesn't have to be anything special. Okay. Write down in the left-hand margin what that limiting belief is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I get this question a lot. Well, what if I don't know what my limiting belief is? Okay. Here's how we deal with that. There's a question on the top of the form and you can ask yourself this question right now, which is what is stopping me from achieving and then fill in your goal or dream? What's stopping me from achieving X? Okay. And whatever comes up first, that is your number one limiting belief. Okay. Now there's probably more than one thing that's going to come up. Whatever does come up, capture it in that left-hand side of the page, just as it comes up in the same words that are your immediate thoughts. Don't marketing buzz it. Don't, don't write down what you think you should just capture whatever comes, comes for you. Okay. Now keep asking that question. What's stopping me from achieving X? Keep asking that question until you have every answer that comes up for you. Okay. Like I said, I had a whole page of these. Okay. Wow. So capture yeah. them all. Okay. And don't judge them. If you have one, great. If you have a hundred, great. No big deal. Okay. All right. Then how we conquer and transform these limiting beliefs is go back up to the first one and on the right hand side of the page, write the complete opposite of that limiting belief. So for me, the opposite of my limiting belief is I will compete in the Ironman World Championships. And then do that for the same thing on down the line for every single one of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, here's where it gets really fun. Okay. That is step one that we just completed. Now, take this list and capture it in some way so that you carry it with you every day. Because now you have the awareness yeah. Right. You've, you've unearthed these limiting beliefs that are rolling around in your mind every day and stopping you. So now our job is to change that thought pattern when it happens in the moment and rewire 
that thought pattern in our unconscious, unconscious mind. Okay. So how that happens is take this list with you. You can take a picture of it and carry it on your phone. If you're a journal person and you carry your journal, then carry your journal with you. And when you notice that you're having these limiting beliefs, stop what you are doing and say out loud the unlimiting version of the belief. Mm -hmm. So here's how it worked for me. Okay. I would stop in my office, dead in my tracks, and I would say, I will compete in the Ironman World Championships. And let me, let me let you in on a little secret here. Okay. We are literally rewiring a new connection in our brain. So this thought pattern that we've had, this limiting belief is a thought pattern that has existed probably for a long time. And we are literally forming a new connection, a new thought pattern. So it's going to feel different. It's going to feel weird the first day, the first few times that you do this. And you may even feel like it feels contrived or you're like talking yourself into it. Well, here's the truth. You are talking your unconscious mind into this new unlimiting belief. Okay. You're talking it out of the old limiting belief. Okay. Now it gets easier every day. And the other thing I want you to notice, and don't be surprised by this, because I was, is how often you have these limiting beliefs in a day. Like I just thought, oh, this is kind of a fleeting thing that I think about. No, this was pervasive. And I didn't uncover that until I had the awareness and was carrying my list with me that I went, oh my gosh, this happens all the time, every single day. No wonder I'm getting my own, in my own way. I think, you know, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask a question because I think it's coming mm -hmm. up for me personally mm -hmm. is, um, I've done something similar to, to this, uh, for myself. And I notice that when I speak it out loud, uh, immediately afterwards in my brain or the other part of me is like, that's bullshit. You know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it's like, that can't happen. You know what I mean? It's like, almost like they're fighting. I always have visualized like a little angel on one side and a little devil on my shoulder. And they're kind of like in my head, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think, so I just wanted to ask you and just kind of bring light to that. I'm sure other people might experience that. And you might've experienced that too. What would you, what would you say the antidote for that is Here's the antidote. First of all, realize what's happening. It, nine times out of 10, it's fear that's getting in your way. And so here's what you can do. In that moment, visualize achieving your dream. What is it going to look, feel, and sound like? This is another key in the book, by the way. And it's another entry into the unconscious. So what will it look, feel, and sound like? So if you if you do that visualization while you are verbalizing your unlimiting belief, you can actually transform that limiting belief even faster. And it will alleviate that devil sitting on your shoulder going, well, that's bullshit. Right, right. I mean, it's true. I mean, I, I don't have experienced that, but I know for myself, I've been going through another level. I think it never ends. And I was going to ask you for yourself if it ever, if it ever ends. but. Um, I think we're always going to that next level for ourselves. At least I am. I'm, cut, I'm a performer overachiever. It's my personality. Mm -hmm. so I'm always looking for what's like the, like the next thing, the next thing. I know that about myself. It also has a huge, huge, its own stuff going on. Um, but I think that when I've experienced this before, I do your exact, I'm going to, I'm going to do exactly what you say. I love the step-by-step -step process. I didn't do it that way. It's kind of skipped some steps. So now I'm going to go back and do it again and, and really experience what it's like. And then in hearing my own um, brain patterns, I would you say, or unconscious or subconscious kind of talking to me and how that just stops us all the time. I mean, it's so, it's really true. So what's next for you? Are you, now that you've done the Iron Man, I mean, that's phenomenal and now you're a speaker and you're out there. Are you working on something right now where you're actually going through the exact same process right now and on what's next for you? Is there something specific? Yeah, I'm really glad you mentioned that, Heather, because you're absolutely right. Whatever kind of personality you are, whether you know, you're a, a big thinker, achiever like yourself, or you're one of the other what I'll call four tendencies out there, uh, which is, is just, you know, we have different tendencies is all, okay? Regardless, as you grow and expand and you improve 
and you transform one set of limiting beliefs, as you continue to grow and expand, you'll come up with more, okay? Because remember, that's how our caveman brain works, right? Our caveman brain is always sitting there trying to keep us safe and identify threats to doing it. So when we think expansively and are really pushing ourselves to think big, like 10x something, right? Think as big as we possibly can and challenge ourselves to go bigger with it. Until we have done this over and over and over and it becomes our go-to, you know, we're, we basically think of it like this. We have installed a new habit because now it's so much easier for me I, I just sort of go there more naturally now, but it still takes active work, okay? And since I crossed the finish line in 2012, I actually took it even bigger. So yes, I have become a published author and a, a world-renowned speaker, and I've also become a world-class ultra-endurance athlete, Wow. which means that I compete in something called the Ultraman, which is a three-day, 320-mile triathlon. Okay, yeah. you're very crazy at this point. You're just crazy. Totally crazy. <laughs> yeah, totally crazy. You're, just, you're beyond. You're crazy. It's done. <laughs> That's yeah. nuts. Yeah. Oh, my God, Karen. I'm like, good power to you. I'll be there, like, cheering you on, <laughs> but that, I mean, that's really... Impressive. And I just want to reiterate the, your story is you just said I was a recreational r runner. I hadn't really done bike before, you know, you like swim, you swim, but you're like a swimmer, which is very different. Um, I think that's pretty impressive that you're able to be at that level. Let, what are we at? Like, you know, eight years later. I mean, that's huge. That's well, thank you. And let, let, let me say something here to that uh, because the, this show is really not about me. It's really all about your audience, right? And so what I want to impart about that is uh, these ultra athletics that I now do, they've just become my go-to expansion vehicle. Like it's really easy for me to, I say easy, it's relatively easy, okay? Like the training is still difficult for these races and actually competing in them is still difficult. But it's an easy vehicle for me to expand myself, to expand my thoughts, my body, my uh, feelings, my mental faculties. That has become my go-to. Now I can also do that in writing, I can also do that in my work with senior executive leaders. Uh, and it, you know, it's something that I really enjoy this whole athletic piece. So I would say to listeners, you know, it's not about me using that as a vehicle. It's about what is your vehicle? You know, some people's vehicle is music. Some is their work. Some is relationships. Some is helping others. Some is, uh, you know, pursuing and fulfilling a really big mission, you know, and I have two really big missions that don't really have anything to do with my athletics but my athletics is definitely a gateway to being able to fulfill them. Mm. Okay. I love that. That's actually awesome. So when you have, you said that we have to wrap it up here a second, I've been on time clock. I apologize. Mm -hmm. But uh, you had mentioned about the form mm -hmm. and let's go ahead and share that website when you can, and I'll repeat it for you. Yeah, absolutely. So the website is velocity, which is the name of my company, leadership consulting, dot com forward slash heather heather yay yeah it's easy to remember see you can remember this stuff on the treadmill yes so velocity leadership consulting dot com forward slash heather and what are they going to find there they are going to find some really cool stuff so shh, keep it to yourself but then once you find out how great it is share it share it share it because this will help everybody and like i said we said at the top of the show I'm on a mission to eradicate limiting beliefs and transform our world. So let's all do that, okay? So what they're going to find is the form that we talked about on how to conquer and transform limiting beliefs into unlimiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. Then you're also going to find a playlist of five videos, a short, less than two minutes, on how to use these cognitive techniques in your unconscious mind to use the, the keys in my book. Then you'll also find a way to order the book if you'd like to read that and look at what it, the other six keys are and use those. And then there's also a way that you can chat with me uh, about maybe your leadership opportunities or improvements that you'd like to make and how that might look. Awesome. Okay, great. I was going to say the website one more time, Karen, velocityleadershipconsulting.com forward slash Heather. Um, thank you so much for being here and just really want to acknowledge you for everything that you've 
had to go through to be where you're at today. I think we all have a personal story, something we've had to overcome externally, internally, personally, and you've really shown that on, on a very powerful way now that you're an elite athlete and of course an elite speaker and um, author and leadership consultant that's pretty powerful so i just want to acknowledge you oh thank you and you know what we all have that inside us so what is that for you tap into that and take it really big and you know what heather and i are gonna be the first ones right behind you to support you that is absolutely true like a good coach right i'm sure you have yeah all right, everyone, this is Heather Havenwood. You can check me out at heatherhavenwood.com. And again, that URL for Karen is velocityleadershipconsulting.com forward slash Heather. Everyone, thanks so much. Bye.